Welcome to the most crucial kingdom of organisms for life on Earth. Photosynthesis started in the oceans over two billion years before the earliest terrestrial life. Single-celled algae, free-floating and reproducing through mitosis, were the first autotrophs. The first plants that resemble those we know today are the bryophytes or mosses. These are simple, relying on moist conditions to grow and reproduce, and form clumps with little structure, unable to attain any real height. Over time, more complex forms emerged, with compound leaves, strong stems, and root systems. These seed ferns, pteridosperms, are now extinct and were the first plants to produce seeds. Seeds make a huge difference. They allow a plant to spread its offspring reliably beyond its immediate environment, without a need for water to transport gametes and spores this having been the method used until now by the bryophytes and mosses. Each seed contains enough stored energy for the contained embryo to sprout roots and push through the soil and grow its own leaves, taking on the role of energy production. When growing, some plants use others to provide a ladder to the sunlight, allowing them to overcome their own structural limitations at a much cheaper opportunity cost to the climate. For some plants, however, the sky is the limit. The giant sequoia is the largest and among the oldest, reaching 100 meters in height. Some of the trees living today have been growing since the dawn of the Mayan civilization three and a half thousand years ago. The sequoias are found in the misty mountains of Northern California, where they grow in groves towering over the surrounding forest. Sequoias have a number of adaptations to their surroundings. Aerial roots absorb moisture from the misty air to supply higher parts of the tree. The tree's bark can be three feet thick, making it resistant to the forest fires that sweep the Sierra Nevada, and its seeds are adapted to these fires. When there is a forest fire, the undergrowth is raised to the ground, leaving bare earth. The sequoia is an opportunist, and releases the seeds from its cones shortly after a fire, enabling the seedlings to grow free of competition for light. A huge group of plants use insects or other animals to help them reproduce. These are the angiosperms. They rely on animals to transport gametes between plants, and for this service, they pay a brightly advertised bribe. Alongside this vivid visual display, the flower provides a small amount of sweet edible nectar or pollen to whatever comes to collect it. Some pollen containing haploid sex cells is then sprinkled onto the visitor to be transferred to the next flower it lands on.
Once a flower is fertilized, it produces seeds, and some species go further, encasing these in fleshy pericarps. These provide protection for this investment, and a parcel of nutrients to tempt an animal into eating and dispersing the plant's progeny. We know these as fruit. Once the fruit is digested, the seeds end up on the soil, ready to grow a new member of their species. <laughs>